Hello and welcome to Colombo Field here on the campus of Brockton High School where today the Everett Crimson Tide come to town to face your Brockton Boxers. The Boxers coming off a very, very convincing start to the season and they are looking to keep their high-powered offense going here at home against the Crimson Tide. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high atop the field here at Marciano Stadium. Brockton coming off a very convincing 5-1 win against the Trojans of Bridgewater Random High School. An effort that Bridgewater scored with only a couple of minutes left in that game. And that game seems like forever ago. We've had a couple of rainouts in the time between then and now. And Brockton might come out a little bit rusty here because we've had a lot of wet weather as the Hurricanes have battered the South Shore. And we'll continue to do so for at least the next few days. Everett wearing their away red jerseys, red shorts, white trim. Brockton with their home whites, red and black trim. Again, looking to start out strong. Everett will have the first possession. And starting off with it. And immediately off the bat, a free kick for the Crimson Tide. Everett back and forth with their back defenders. Back up across midfield now. Brockton deflecting it back. And now sent ahead, and we're going to have an offsides against Brockton. As a few steps offsides was the hat trick score from that game against Bridgewater. Brockton again, the high powered offense put up. Four, uh, four goals in the first half against the Trojans. And then the defense got a little bit sloppy later in the second half. Bridgewater able to get one past the boxer's goalkeeper. A lot of short passing here from the boxer. Now sending it long, and it's going to go all the way in on the Everett goalkeeper who picks it up for the easy save. Now Brockton up ahead trying to keep it in bounds is number 15. He's able to do that. His shot is going to go just wide. That was Number 15, or 16, Dalton Rocha for the Boxers, getting his first minutes of this young season. Only the second game of the season for the Boxers. In their big three-divisional matchup against New Bedford, called off due to the after-effects of Hurricane Irma. And what weather here again tonight, the after-effects of Hurricane Jose. Of course, we've got Maria coming up the coast and another one right behind Maria. So wet weather for the next couple of weeks is a slight breeze flowing in from west to east, gusts of about 15 miles an hour. And it is a balmy 61 degrees out for this matchup between the Crimson Tide and your boxers. The weather report brought to you by the Mad Dog Research Team. So we have a high leg played by number 17 of the boxers. Now 
now sent all the way in and headed right back out by the boxer defense. A little touch and go taken out of bounds by number 17 of the boxers. Everett without a offensive opportunity thus far. Brockton has been excellent so far this season on the deep offensive and deep defensive sides of the ball. With a little bit of room to grow at midfield. Of course, Junior Gomes, the senior captain, listed at midfield, scoring three goals against the Trojans. And now sent ahead looking for Gomes and it will be out of play. Number five unable to catch up to it. That was Derek DePina, the senior defender. Head coach Herminia Furtado in his second season taking the boxers on a lengthy playoff run last year. This team this year is very, like I mentioned, very, very high-powered offensively. And hoping to make a very, very deep postseason run. Because last year we had that very weird situation with too many games being scheduled and the boxers had to forfeit their last two and they would have been undefeated if they didn't and this, that, and the other thing and it led to a upset, I believe against Durfee High School in the South Sectional Tournament. Now Brockton able to get possession deep in Crimson Tide territory this is Gomes, and the shot is going to go way high up through the uprights. It's a little bit over-anxious there, standing about five feet from the Everett goal. And now the Crimson Tide have possession. This one sent ahead, but a little bit off course and kicked out by Everett. Brockton is going to have their first corner kick of the game with about 33 and a half minutes remaining. Number 20 to take it for the boxers. Curving it inward, and it's headed out by the Crimson Tide. Sent back high across the box and headed out by Everett. That was Odair Montero on the corner opportunity for the boxers as we approach 32 minutes remaining now in the first half. Still scoreless between the Everett Crimson Tide and your Brockton boxers. Now Brockton with yet another opportunity. We might hear that a lot. This is number nine. Losing possession of it. Jonathan Rodriguez, one of the goal, goal scorers against BR. Senior forward with a lot of speed right up the middle of the field. And Brockton is going to have another corner kick. This one is going to be taken by number five. Again, Derek DePina. So DePina curving it inward sends this one to high across the box. A lot of wind out there now. Gusts up to about 25 miles an hour. As Junior Gomes gets tripped up. This one sent out of bounds. Boxer throw in. Kept in very nicely and it popped up. It's loose. And kind of jumping around the box. But Brockton takes possession back. Still has it. And Everett's going to be forced to kick it out of play. And it's going to go off of Brockton. So an Everett throw in. 
about 31 minutes remaining in the first half. It's going to be a free kick, rather, for the Crimson Tide. Probably a high leg. Now Brockton working the short passing game. There's an opening, a shot, and that's going to be a goal for the Boxers. It bounced off the back post and in for Brockton. A couple of boxers were in the area. Jonathan Rodriguez, Derek DePina, and Junior Gomes. We'll see which one of them gets credit for the goal. So one nothing boxers, 30 minutes remaining in the first half. And now right back up. With an opportunity a shot, it's going to be deflected. As you can see, the wind really starting to pick up here. The end flag getting blown over. You can see it's really starting to pick up here. Being a shot deflected out of play by Everett, so we'll do the corner kick again. 29 minutes remaining now. This one sent high in the wind, taking it right out of bounds, so Everett with a goal kick. Couple of players tripped up. It looks like we have a little bit of an injury. Looks like a cramp in the right leg for one of the Crimson Tide. Everyone's going to retreat to their benches as the rain and wind picking up here a little bit as head trainer Jerry Connors attends to the Injured member of the Crimson Tide. And walking off under his own power, so that's a good sign. Take a replay of that injury and kind of an old school hockey hip check. Probably a little bit of cramping on the hip area. Out of bounds off of Everett. Brockton throw in. Now Rodriguez can't get a clean shot off. And it's going to go out of bounds off of the boxers now with about 26 and a half minutes remaining. Take a look at that replay. It's a little bit too high for the waiting head of one of the boxers forwards. Free kick for the Crimson Tide from their own 15-yard line. It's going to go straight out of bounds in front of the Everett bench. Now 
my box is shot, and this one attempting to dive into the ball just a bit outside and out of bounds. So that year after year when the boxers have a successful short passing game, they are very, very, very potent especially in the offensive zone because they're creating space that doesn't appear to be there like so. And now a breakaway, and it's going to be offsides against... No, it's going to be a goal for the boxers. Initially ruled offsides number 18, scoring that one. That is Jalen DeRosa, the sophomore midfielder, getting ahead of the Everett defense. So we take a look at this one. That's Jonathan Rodriguez up to... DeRosa and putting it home. We have another goal. It looks like right off the bat. I'm going to have to take another look at this one. So that's the end of the replay. And then right back in and popping it past the Everett goalkeeper, I believe, was DeRosa again. So another goal here for the boxers. They quickly running away with this one. It's three to nothing. So let's take a look at what happened on this one. And that is DeRosa again just completely fooling the Everett goalkeeper for his second in about ten seconds. So three to nothing boxers, twenty-two minutes to go in the first half in unofficial time. Everett in dire straits, usually Crimson Tide, a powerhouse on the football field. It would appear, at least, that it is not so much on the soccer pitch. So in other sporting news, as things have calmed down a little bit here at Marciano, it seems every few months the Aaron Hernandez circus gets back into the news. To give you the bullet points, the former players of the National Football League have sued the NFL for not telling them that severe repeated head trauma can cause a degenerative brain disease known as CTE. And CTE can cause depression, mood swings, memory loss, the whole nine yards. And the autopsy in the study done by Boston University has shown that Aaron Hernandez had stage three out of four possible stages of CTE at the time of his suicide. So the Hernandez family and the lawyers involved in his trials have sued the NFL for, I believe, $22 million on behalf of his daughter, saying that she has been deprived of his companionship, quote unquote, due to a long chain of it's the Patriots' fault and the NFL's fault that Aaron Hernandez had CTE. If he didn't have CTE, he wouldn't have killed Old Lloyd. He wouldn't have been in jail. He wouldn't have committed suicide. I don't know if they're going to be successful, but that's a heck of a defense right there. It's already been proven that playing football in some form or another can cause CTE. CTE cannot be diagnosed unless it's an autopsy, which can only be performed if you're dead. 
So Aaron Hernandez, I believe, 27 at the time of his death. It's an it's an interesting one. I I agree with the family that it's the Patriots' fault that he had, or not the Patriots in general, but the NFL that Aaron Hernandez had CTE, but then you could go back and say it's the University of Florida's fault because he could have contracted it from hits in college or in high school or any of the Pop Warner teams he might have played for in Connecticut. It could be a never-ending chain of, well, let's sue this team and that team and this team and that team because it's their fault that Aaron Hernandez has CTE and if you're the Lloyd family, you can follow this by saying, well, if Hernandez didn't have CTE, which was caused by the Patriots in the NFL, he wouldn't have killed our son, Odin Lloyd. So they could theoretically file a wrongful death lawsuit against the Patriots in the NFL and the University of Florida and the high school in Bristol, Connecticut, and every other team that Aaron Hernandez has ever played for. And they could win some money. And then it's a never-ending chain of if anything bad happens to someone that's caused by a former player in the NFL, you're opening the door for hundreds upon hundreds of lawsuits. I mean, you got Ryan Leaf, who could blame... What happened to him on CTE? I mean, if Ray Lewis was found guilty of murder back in Atlanta in 03, you could say that was blamed on CTE. Any, really any drunk driving or under the influence or drugs or anything could be blamed on mood swings and depression and this degenerative brain disease is Brockton with another opportunity and an excellent save by Everett's goalkeeper with about 16 minutes left and another Crimson Tide member down as we're going to take a look at that save and able to get his arms up was the Everett goalkeeper. And we have another Crimson Tide member down. This is number 16 for the team in red. Holding his right leg. Trying to shake out his, his ankle. In other sports news, or sports media news for that matter, the White House calling for ESPN to fire... Jameel Hill, who has been critical of our fearless leader, and hear the, simp uh, the sarcasticness on that one. I don't agree. I think freedom of speech allows you, and I get you're a public figure, you're in sports media, and this, that, and the other thing. Freedom of speech says you can do whatever you want. As long as these tweets that Jamil Hill called Donald Trump a white supremacist and all that were not posted while she was on the clock at ESPN, they have absolutely no right to control what she posts on social media. As number 17... And number 15, uh, 16 rather, for the Crimson Tide still injured. Hardly putting any weight on his right leg. Hopping onto the back of the trainer's cart. But a lot of stoppage time ended or added to this one. Be a 
free kick for the Crimson Tide. The goaltender keeping it. And now rocked in with an opportunity. This one pops up high and out of play. Be another corner kick for the boxers. This one popped up and headed out of bounds by the boxers. So, goal kick for the Crimson Tide. 13 minutes to go. 3 0 boxers. On top of Everett, again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action from the Peter Farley Press Box overlooking Armand Colombo Field and the Harry C. Allen Track here at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Of course, can't forget to mention the John Waldron Snack Shack. Aaron Tebow Bank of Lights. Big week ahead for... Boxer Athletics, of course, tomorrow night. Boxer football team right back here at Marciano Stadium for their second home game of the season against those Knights from Catholic Memorial High. And this one is pounded, sniped into the back of the net. And that is a fourth boxer goal. We're going to take a look at the replay on that one. Headed back in. This is Jonathan Rodriguez, number nine, popping it top shelf left corner. And that gives the boxers a very, very healthy lead. Four to nothing with about 11 minutes left in the first half. And Everett's going to make some substitutions, understandably. Rockton right back in and pressuring yet again are the boxers. Game happening on the second night. Excuse me, the second night of the Jewish New Year Rosh Hashanah. The boxers looking to start the new year off right with a win here against Everett. Of course, next week the BC High game, BC High football game, occurring on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement in the Jewish faith. I don't think I will be pulling the Sandy Koufax and skipping out on the Boxers game against BC High at Harvard. Sandy Koufax, of course, in the Baseball Hall of Fame, one of the most famous pitchers of all time for the Dodgers, refusing to play on Yom Kippur. Gabe Kapler did it for the Red Sox a few years ago. Kevin Euclid. Of course, Euclid the brother-in-law to the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL, no debate, Tom Brady, who's having himself quite the week, as he threw for upwards of 440 yards in Louisiana, as the Patriots took down the Saints, hefty margin, my fantasy team did excellent Excellent. Out of my three leagues, I won two of them. And 
and I'm looking forward to an excellent start in just a few hours as the LA Rams, my top running back is Todd Gurley, the LA Rams playing a weak, weak San Francisco 49ers team as boxers with yet another opportunity. Let's say Gurley has three touchdowns, but just shy of 100 yards. Just shy of 100 yards for Todd Gurley, but three touchdowns. And I'm going to say the final score, it's going to be a high-scoring game. The defenses have been fairly lackluster. The, the Rams defense projected to be one of the best in the league. But I'm going to say the final score is 43. Feeling 43 to 30. Uh, to 37. 43 37, the Mad Dog official call. Everyone knows the rules. If I'm right, everyone watching this has to buy me dinner. 43 37, Rams coming out on top. Everyone knows the rules. Todd Gurley, three touchdowns, 95 yards on the night for. For Mr. Gurley. That game in Santa Barbara, the 49ers, the home team in that Thursday night matchup. We've got about six minutes left here in the first half. Four nothing. Rocked it on top of Everett in what has been a very convincing start to the season for the Boxers. Putting up four goals total against, uh, five goals total rather against Bridgewater Raynham and now looking to more than double their Total on the year, I'll call it. So six minutes left in the first half. You know, an official time. Official time is kept on the field by the zebras. That's the referees. Sprockton has just been completely dominant in all phases of this game so far. Everett so far failing to register a shot on net. Brockton with many, many shots. And showing us why they're ranked top 15 in the state. Free kick for Derek DePina. Headed back in and Brockton yet another opportunity. This one picked up by the Everett goalkeeper and sent out with a little bit less than five minutes to go. Might be the Brockton goalkeeper's first touch of the game. Speaking of football, Patriots playing the Houston Texans in Foxborough this Sunday. Feeling blowout. 
Houston's defense has also been lackluster. I'm thinking the Patriots put up 40. Go 40 to 17 in favor of the Pats. And a reminder, the official time kept on the field by the referees. The scoreboard clock will stop at two minutes. And it is at that point that the Mad Dog Research Team starts a stopwatch. Try to gauge how much time is left. We're usually within 15 seconds. Can't imagine too, too much stoppage time will be added due to the score. And we have another Crimson Tide member down right in front of their own bench. of boxer substitutions about two minutes to go now again unofficial time four nothing Brockton over the crimson tide of Everett and what has so far been a complete blowout effort for the boxers and they're going to have their fourth corner kick of the game taken by Derek DePina. This one sent in and a little bit too far. It's going to go out the other side and a throw in for the Crimson Tide. And a free kick for Everett. Brockton taking possession off of the free kick. Maybe about 30 seconds left in this one in the first half as the boxers have a convincing lead four to nothing the score Rodriguez with one DeRosa with two Brockton back onto the Everett side of the field looking to add to this total before halftime can't be much time left at all. But Brockton with another late opportunity. And it's going to be a goal kick for Crimson Tide. About 15 seconds left here. This one's sent ahead. Brockton with an opportunity, and it's going to go out of bounds, and Brockton will have yet another corner kick opportunity. See the wind blowing this ball around.
sent in and right out the other side and it'll be a goal kick for the Crimson Tide. Maybe about 10 seconds left in this half. One sent back towards midfield by the boxer goalkeeper. So a lot of time has been added to this first half. Everett's first corner kick of the night. This one sent in and headed right out by the boxer's back line. This can't be too, too much time left here in the first half. Brockton with a two on one. And it's number 11 chipping it over to Gomes, and he scores. That is number 18, Jalen DeRosa with a hat trick. So DeRosa having himself a game as you see number 11 chipping it over and falling to the ground, launching a shot. and. Everett's goalkeeper has just given up. As DeRosa has a hat trick, Brockton has five goals, Everett has none, and we have maybe five seconds left in the first half. So already the game ball to Jalen DeRosa. Forget about the second half. Doesn't matter if anybody else scores five goals, DeRosa is taking the game ball and the boxers. Another opportunity, this one broken up. Can't be much time left here at all. Everett has a last second opportunity down low. Stopping, spinning, and Brockton taking right over. We have a hurt boxer in front of the Everett bench. Free kick for Brockton in front of the Everett bench. Another opportunity if they can get a shot out. This one popped off of Everett and threw the upright. So it'll be another corner kick for the Boxers. Peter to take this corner kick. There's going to be about two and a half seconds left here in the first half. Five nothing. Brockton on top. You think?
think the refs would have a little bit of mercy and just end this one. Call off the second half. This one sent back to the Brockton goalkeeper, sent back across midfield. A couple of bodies hit the ground. Very, very, very long first half. A lot of stoppage time. This Brockton has yet another opportunity. Another shot, and this one is sent out of bounds off of Brockton. Still in the first half, maybe about 1.2 seconds to go. Brockton up 5-0, looking to add to that number. Everett thrown deep in their own territory. Brockton with a stifling defense in the Everett offensive zone. Giving the boxers more offensive opportunities. This one headed towards the Everett net. Easy save. And sent back towards midfield by the Crimson Tide. The whistles blow, and the first half, thankfully, has come to an end. The score at halftime, the Brockton Boxers, 5, the Everett Crimson Tide, nothing. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this.
Free kick for the boxers from the 30 yard line. 7 0 the score over the Everett Crimson Tide, and this one saved by the Everett goalkeeper and out of bounds. Another free kick for the boxers. So we approach 22 minutes remaining in the second half. Thrown for the boxers, and this one into the middle where Everett takes over. Free kick for the boxers. We are halfway through the second half here. Seven to nothing. Brockton on top of Everett. And what has been a very convincing effort for the boxers. Painful on one side of the field. Weather has been suspect tonight. Of course, the after effects of one of the many hurricanes that has battered the East Coast, the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, Florida. Of course, all starting off with Hurricane Harvey down in Houston that came across the Gulf of Mexico. And so we had. Irma, Jose, Maria's on its way. A few tropical storms lined up. It's just a mess. But there is some good out of every bad. All these professional athletes, starting with J.J. Watt. Starting up fundraising efforts to some rebuilding efforts in their native areas. Let's start with J.J. Watt in Houston, who's raised an astounding amount of money, $37 million for Hurricane Harvey relief efforts. We've seen probably the most surprising is Tim Duncan from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Of course, they were devastated by Irma. Carmelo Anthony starting one for Hurricane Maria. It just devastated Puerto Rico. So we've got the earthquake in Mexico. The whole world just kind of going downhill. got North Korea launching nukes every day it seems like and the Twitter war of words with our fearless leader Donald Trump one still wonders how did he get into the White House 
how did he actually win that election? I mean, you can tell me hacking all you want, but whether Russia bought Facebook ads or whatever the heck these guys are saying now, more people still voted for Trump than for Hillary or Bernie Sanders. Now, I'm not a Hillary supporter, nor am I a Trump supporter, but this guy is actually senile. Like, I'm convinced. He's actually lost his mind and can't control his thoughts and he can't keep anything in his own mind and everything's going to come out on Twitter it seems like every news story features Donald Trump insulting somebody because he has to feel bigger and better than anybody else on the planet and he's an egomaniac the report on what's served for dinner at the White House these days is absolutely ridiculous. He's got to have a big piece of steak and two squirts of ketchup. Everybody else can only have one. And then for dessert, he gets two scoops of vanilla ice cream and everybody else can only have one. And he gets a special kind of salad dressing. Everybody else only gets Thousand Island. He's actually out of his mind. And I don't see a way, unless he starts World War III, which is, by the way, very close to happening with North Korea, the rest of the politicians that are supposed to be representing us need to step in and say, listen, this guy's clearly lost his mind. Investigations are not, you can't let this guy damage the United States for another day. But I don't know. That's just me. Back to action here. We got less than 10 minutes left. Brockton up 7 to nothing over Everett in what has been... I was fairly excited for this game. I thought it was going to be a much more highly competitive game than it was. And that has just not been the case. Of course, I thought New Bedford's game last year was going to be a blow. Uh, yeah, going to be a blowout, and it was highly competitive. Let's take a look at this instant replay of the goalie for Everett making a nice save. So eight minutes left. Seven nothing boxers. Now, Everett with an opportunity here in the Boxers' defensive line. Taking it from there. Six twenty to go. Boxers in once again, and this one's going to be deflected out. A couple of nice saves off of a few different Crimson Tide. Five minutes left, thankfully, in this one. Should have been waved off a while ago because the boxers have just completely dominated it.
Hawksters deep in Crimson Tide territory, such has been the case all night. This one up and in and the boxers add another one to bring the score to eight to nothing. And this has been a skunking. This is going to be a long ride back north of Boston for the Crimson Tide. Who have just been absolutely obliterated. And this is this has been a very ugly game. Well, two minutes to go. Official time kept on the field by the referees. Can't imagine there'll be much stoppage time. Have some mercy and just end it already. Free kick for the boxers from seven yards out. This one's going to make its way out of bounds. Hopefully the referees have a little bit of mercy. This one in on the boxers goalkeeper. It seems like the first shot all game. Boxers running around with it playing keep away. Can't be much time left here at all. The unofficial clock says time has expired. The boxers winning eight to nothing. But they, there was a lot of injuries, so there could be a decent amount of stoppage time. Nope, the whistles are going to blow, and that's going to be the ball game. So a complete domination effort from the boxers. Eight to nothing, the final score over the Ever Crimson Tide. And it has been just pure domination from the home team. And on behalf of everyone on our crew, our director, Mike Simmons, cameraman, Aaron Tebow, Jacob Hazel, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.